Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Hi, I'm Shireen Tan. So we just got back from Chateauneuf du Pape, <laughs> a region that we wanted to go for a long time. Before we went, what were your initial impressions of the wines in the region? I think one of the first few wines that we shared and you really liked was the Chateauneuf du Pape. Um, I think your excitement was much higher than mine. I was interested in it. I really wanted to explore that area because it's one of the classic wine regions of the world. But I have to be honest, before the trip, I wasn't that into Chateau du Pape white and red, both wines. Uh, I kind of thought that, well, the wines are really nicely crafted and all that, but I usually find that they lack like finesse, elegance. I'm generalizing, right? I mean, every single region would have that kind of wines that you would like. But yeah, that was my initial impression. You? Well, I was really excited to go. Actually, the, one of our first wines was a Clos de Papa 2002. Yeah. We had while we were in Singapore that really, really, uh, really got me interested in the region. We judged with we judged with the president of the Vineyard de Pop Vignerons Association, the Chateau Blanc, we were in Romania. He invited us to come over. For those of you that are wine geeks, you know that in the Rhone Valley, especially in the Southern Rhone. Vines are bush vine. Mm -hmm. They're low to the ground because there's a wind called the Mistral that comes in through the Alps. It's piercing, it's blowing really, really hard. And then another characteristic of the vineyards of Chetneuf du Pop are the galets, the round stones. And what they do is they hold in the sunlight, the heat, and they give off more heat at night, allowing the, the grapes to reach full maturity. And we experienced all of that. Maybe not the Mistral in full force, but mm -hmm. we did experience it, right? Yeah. So I think what's really interesting is we hear and read about all we heard and read about, you know, the condition, the 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 soil type and Chateau du Pop, but uh you really get a different sense when you're there because you start to think, you start to imagine the people, how do they work in those vineyards, you know? It's so hard for us to even walk across those vineyards and other people need to work with them. So that's really quite emotional when you understand that this bottle that you have on your hand, it takes a lot of work to get them into a bottle. One thing that I thought was interesting, you see pictures of the vineyards with all the galets and stones, and we did see that, but there are other vineyards and soil types too, where it's not just all galet. Like I mean, you, there was sandy soil as well, yeah. You really like the Grenache with sandy soil, Absolutely. right? Correct. And we didn't experience the Mistral in full force, but it was early spring and it was starting to blow through and <laughs> you noticed the, the temperature in the air, right? I mean, when it blows through, even though it says it's like 16 degrees Celsius on, on our phone, but you feel like it could be 9 degrees Celsius. It's... The wind gets chilly and that's what keeps the grapes dry, keeps them free of disease. Uh, what's also interesting is when you're there looking at a vineyard, you realize that Chateau du Pop really has great potential for organic um, viticulture because of the mistra, the dry weather, the condition. So in Chateau du Pop, most of the production is red wine, although there are there is a small production of whites. And within that style, in reds in generally, Chateau du Pop, you can have big, humongous, massive red wines, or you can have red wines that are kind of more traditional, more on the elegant, elegant side. <laughs> the wines are still 15 and a half, 16 degrees of alcohol, and then you have the whites. Let's talk about the reds first, uh, maybe our preferences and styles. I'm definitely towards the elegant side where it's a little bit more dull bad with more red fruit, um, nicer acidity and you know, less filter, you can feel the tannins coming through. That's the kind of style that I like. Yeah, I, I, me too. I liked, I definitely liked when the, you couldn't feel the alcohol as well, so they were more, more elegant. You also have wines that are made big and blousy and full of oak and just humongous. Mm -hmm. I like the wines that are dialed back a little bit mm -hmm. more. I don't have an issue with oak. In fact, one of the wines that I really love is 100% new oak. I think when you are using when you're using your oak and having good integration, that's great. Especially when your fruit has amazing phenolic ripeness, the wine tastes good. Let's talk about the whites. Oh, you're asking? Okay. Yeah, I'm asking. Do it again, do it again. <laughs> Let's talk about the whites. Uh, the whites, I think they're fantastic uh, because, well, you can blend the grapes, right? So you achieve such a 
great balance, full body, great acidity, long finish. I think that what exemplifies um, uh, Chateau de Dupap wine. My personal preference, I always look forward to tasting more oaky <laughs> white <laughs> wine over there with like, you know, um, barrel age or, or um, fermented in oak barrels because because I mean, you've got such good fruit again, right? Uh, I really appreciate Chateau de Dupap white when it's more age worthy with nothing holding back. Yeah, you could they could see definitely the two styles, so the fresh and the kind of fresh fruity main stainless steel, then the more barrel fermented, barrel aged. Those usually had grapes mo mostly predominantly Roussan. It's oh. something that you really appreciate. I love right? because of the honey um, flavor. Chateauneuf de Pop was blessed with two recent outstanding vintages, 2015, 2016. We tasted hundreds of Chateauneuf de Pops from both vintages, so we could see a stylistic, mostly a stylistic difference. What were your some impressions of 2015 versus 2016? Well, 2015 is, is obviously more generous, warmer, um, bigger structure for the tenants uh, based on the rather huge samples that we had. 2016 is much more accessible, more finesse, but again, still a really good year with nice tenants as well. Uh, I also learned from the, the producers that the, the year was, was good, the quality was good. So 2016 was generally like an overall really great year. At first, I love 2016 because it's much more accessible. Having a glass of um, the 2016, it's easy to drink. But, you know, I think from a consumer perspective, and I ask myself if I were to buy like a case back, I probably would pick 2015 because, you know, I enjoy how it's giving me a lot more. Uh, I generally like tenants, okay? So I really like the 2000, 2015 generous tenants, and I love to imagine how such a structured wine would evolve over one night, one bottle, or even a year or like five, ten years. Yeah, def 2015 definitely seems like it might be a little more seller worthy, might live a little longer. Me personally, I prefer to treat the 2016s. I think they have a little bit more acidity, maybe kind of more yeah. in balance. 15 has more fruit. Yeah. But regardless, you're not going to go wrong with either vintage. 15 and 16, a string of excellent vintages, right? You see, that's why we always have to get two bottles for us, you know. <laughs> The reason that we went was the actual annual event, the Les Printeps de Chateauneuf du Pop. And it was an awesome event in the village of Chateauneuf du Pop. Over 90 producers were pouring all, I think over 250 wines, maybe even 300 wines. It was crowded. They were selling their wine, tasting wine. They had the basic cuvées. They had the special cuvées. What was your impression of that event? Oh my, I discovered so many producers. I mean, I my, my understanding and knowledge of the region was rather limited. And I think there are a lot of producers that don't uh, export their wine. So we tasted a lot of wines that uh, we've never seen before or heard about. And some uh, unicorn small production wines as well. Yeah. I think it's a great for anybody that loves Chateauneuf de Bob. Sometimes it's not so easy to get so many. Those wines get expensive. It's not so easy to taste all of them in one setting. I thought the Les Printemps was a fantastic opportunity. If you get the chance to go, there are a lot of tourists. All the producers are selling the wines at actually a very low, a low, much lower cost than in the cellar. So people were walking out with cases. The only complaint is it was a little bit too crowded. I couldn't taste every producer like we usually like to in a show like that. Yeah, but it's really okay to walk around it. Just for all of this sort of events, just arrive early. You know, right at the beginning when the event opens and that's where it's not as crowded. And then taste for like three hours if you're a consumer, you want to enjoy your day, go ahead. But uh, I definitely agree with you if you're in the vicinity, in a country when print time is happening. There is no reason why you shouldn't visit, especially if you like the wines from Chateauneuf du Pau. Well, my favorite part of the trip was probably having a very in-depth understanding of the the region just by tasting and talking to a couple of producers, understanding goes to the different vintages and having my impression of um, Chateau du Pape changed. Uh, after the trip, I actually liked the wines a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot more now. Uh, and so, come on, we are near the Alps. I get to eat um, cheese every day. <laughs> My favorite part of the trip was the first after the first night of Le Printemps de Chateauneuf de Pop, there was a producer party where all producers brought magnums <laughs> or bigger, and they had vintages going back to 1974 uh, in the 90s, obviously some current vintages, but you, it was almost like, it was awesome, but it was almost like overload because there were so many great wines that, there. Yeah, that's the true. That was really fun. And uh, I stayed until like, I think 2 a.m. dancing and tasting wine at night. It was a lot of fun. So if you get the, 
if you get the chance to taste some Chateauneuf de Pop, the wines are alive and well. Check out the recent string of excellent vintages, 2015 and 16. So guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you at the next episode.